Welcome back to the top 10 ways to improve data warehouse performance. After talking about the benefits of decoupled storage and compute in the last session and how it helps improve performance with multiple workloads, we're now gonna drill into what improves performance within each workload. The first trick is how to shrink data access. When you decouple storage and compute, you introduce a big bottleneck in the middle called the network. If you look at AWS, for example, you can choose between three networks, 10, 25, and 100 gigi. They can basically move one, two and a half or 10 gigabytes per second if you're lucky, fully loaded. Now by themselves, partitions don't take long to move. A 50 to 150 megabyte micro partition snowflake could take as little as 0.01 seconds. But once you get to a one terabyte table, for example, you can only move 1% of it in a second. So if your goal is to run a query in one second or less, you need to be able to only pull exactly what you need and do whatever it takes to make that as small as possible. You can't just pull 100 megabyte chunks at a time and sort it out later. When Firebolt ingests, it sorts, compresses, and shards data into really small ranges that Firebolt calls ranges for fast query performance. It does that using what we call a sparse index which is a primary index built from any number of columns in the table in any order you want. You should be choosing those columns that are used as predicates in the index and, and really nothing more. Firebolt writes those uh, exact ranges as a few or maybe up to thousands of rows of data or more to maximize performance. Whenever a query comes in, the query optimizer asks the sparse index, where's the data I need? It returns a, a list of ranges that we call a range set from the index that is 10x or even smaller than what you'd get back if you fetched entire partitions. This typically is around one to 3% of the table. This alone can make data access 10 times or faster because it's 10 times or less data, but it also makes data processing faster. Why? Because the clusters, which we call engines, are only storing ranges of data, not partitions. Since the data sets are 10x or smaller, the scans and other processing is going to be 10x or faster as well. Let's see this in action. I'm back in the Firebolt environment here, Firebolt Manager. If I look at the table here, we're still running against the uh, central, it's about 20 terabytes of data. The central table has a little over 32 billion rows and 17 terabytes of data compressed down to a terabyte, which is really good compression. The table itself, if you look at the definition and I'll go refresh your memory on the definition, it's a fact table called LTV with a whole bunch of columns. I think it's 51 total. And then there's a primary index at the end called, uh, well, it's just the index. It's got timestamp, media source, and app ID. So if I look at the query we were running before, which was the detail table at the bottom of the Looker dashboard, it's got these 10 or so fields, some of which are aggregations. And then the predicates are timestamp and media source, which are the first two uh, columns in the primary index, which is ideal. This should run really fast. So if I run this with uh, a $4 an hour engine, I'm scanning about 400 megabytes or 0 .0, less than 0.05% of the compressed table. Okay, a half of a thousandth of the table. Really good selection of the data out of that table. If I increase it to three weeks out of one week. It's still, because the timestamp is the primary sort, it's only pulling less than a gig, so less than 0.1% of the table compressed and doing it in 0.27 seconds. Even if I run into a much larger, uh, much lower engine, that's half the cost. Even if I do that, I'm still running in less than a second. That's really good performance. And this is just with a primary index, nothing else. Okay. 
So a sparse index is great for data access, but part of the reason for using a sparse index is to prune down which ranges you need before fetching them and using them in the predicates. Sometimes that's not enough. In fact, usually you, you really do wanna do more. And that usually involves query optimization, which we'll cover in the next episode.